Greetings from Dystopia, episode 191. Faux de faux. How do you spell that? <laughs> it is cold this morning. I walked out the door. I'm like, whoa. I mean, I knew what the temperature was. I checked before I went out. I told you guys that I don't know how many times. But, uh, yeah, it hit me in the face. I'm like, that's a wee bit chilly. Um, but yeah, it's pretty morning. Just going out for a short walk. Today's a 3,500 step. I just know because I've had a few days that are really low with this auto goal that I'm going to get pummeled. There'll be like an 18,000 step day probably tomorrow or Tuesday. You watch. Um, but yeah, so we're going to go out for a quick walk and I need to winterize the van of sorts. I need to get out everything that can freeze up. Speaking of which, pull out my water bottle and throw it on the seat. And I got another one down here. So I remember to pull those out. 31 or 32 tonight overnight. Just depends on whose report you want to read. Local weather guy says 33. National Weather Service says 32. And I forgot what that other one is. It'll only be for an hour or two. Not really time for things to freeze, but still. Better safe than sorry. I've only had one bottle freeze in the van last winter, but uh, it was not, you know, it was kind of like this, not quite full. But it was funny because the bottle was, you know, twice the diameter just about, where it bulbed out at the bottom. These really cheap, thin plastic ones. I guess it's better because they'll expand. They won't freeze and pop, but still, it makes you kind of nervous when you see that. Chris, you were asking about the Transia. So I'll give you the shot with their logo on it. This is the Transia alcohol stove. There's, this is just the straight model, straight off of the, you know, straight off the order. There are companies that sell them and they solder this seam all the way around the stove. I have never had one leak and I think this is probably my okay this is number two I have two tick marks in the bottom of it um, so this is probably my fifth stove um, so yeah I love the transients. They are bulletproof they're heavy five and a half ounces or so maybe a little bit less but if you a bulletproof stove, it doesn't get any more bulletproof than the Transia. So a couple of the things we, you and I were messaging about, and then I kind of mentioned in the video, and then just for everybody else, I'll show it. The this is the snuffer slash simmer ring. I'll come back to that in a minute. It has a screw-on lid, like I was saying, similar to a ball mason jar. Oh, we got to check and make sure there's no alcohol. Okay, good. That one's empty. Sometimes I leave alcohol in them. Um, inside the lid, you can see that O-ring. What that allows you to do is when you're finished cooking, the simmer ring in the closed position, you drop it on the top. Oxygen, you know, puts out the fire. You let it cool down completely. And then you can put the lid in with the lid on with the remaining alcohol and it's sealed. No matter what, I always carry this in a plastic bag in my pack, um, in a freezer bag, just for safety, you know, just in case the O-ring fails. I would recommend if you go buy a new one, buy an O-ring kit. I don't remember if it's one or two rings in the kit, but always keep another one. And while I've got this one out, I'm going to check it for dry rot and it's in good shape. So I will put the ring back in the lid. So I always check these for dry rot. Really, it's best not to store them with alcohol in them. But if you're out on a day or two day trip, you know, it beats pouring it back into your fuel bottle. Um, so yeah, so with the simmer ring, it drops on the top, but you would, if it's not on there already when you're cooking, set it open is what I do typically drop it on the lid so now you can see around the edge right here are a series of jets 
Um, same way I make my alcohol stoves. They all use a series of jets because as the alcohol vaporizes, it escapes out those holes. So yeah, so that would be wide open and then just slowly changing the diameter of that opening or orifice, whatever you want to call it, you're adjusting your heat. So that would be a super low heat. Much beyond that, and the stove will actually go out. But don't touch this while it's hot. It's common sense, but sometimes I've even done it myself. You know, had it in the, in the stand and reached over and hit it with my finger, and it's very hot, so that's not a joke. Um, but yeah, while it's burning, you know, if you want to put it out, you if the lid is not on, it's again, close the lid all the way, drop it on there, fire will go out, let it cool down. Um, one accessory I would highly recommend if you're outside in cold weather is their winter burner adapter. All it is, it's a preheat. It slides on the bottom of the stove and clicks into this first little seam. It's just a crimp seam. You put alcohol on that pad. Clip it up on there, lock it in place. You light the bottom first and let that alcohol burn while alcohol's already in the top. Eight out of ten times it will ignite this on its own. If it doesn't, you can ignite the stove at the same time. This pre-heat pre the brass, so it uh, gets nice and warm. Um, alcohol doesn't like to burn at super low temperatures, but it just becomes part of the stove when it's not in use. Um, like I said, I absolutely love transients. I've always tried to get that type of performance out of my own stoves that I make, but it doesn't always work. Um, so yeah, it's a nice compact package. If you add the burner ring, it probably adds an extra ounce to the weight. Item number two that I mentioned in dealing with the tranges and just in general is the firebox stove. This is also stove number two. I think stove number one is in my gear in storage. This is the Nano from firebox stoves. This is the titanium version. I also have the old steel version. Well, not that old. These are relatively recent designs. I'm fighting a sneeze. Hang on a minute. Okay. <laughs> Got the sneeze out. The Nano folds down to a very compact package. TI for titanium. <laughs> I'm on a bit of a titanium bender only for items that I use quite often and that's to lighten my load you know the things that can be titanium there's no reason not to other than budget so I'm trying to figure out how to film this um it's too windy outside to get out there let me see if I can flip this camera around can I go low enough Ooh. Don't know if that'll give us wide enough of a view, but let's try it. I might have to invert this video. Come on. Okay. Now, <laughs> fireback firebox stove. You know. What I love about this is it's very flat folding. It it's a bit of origami. This guy has done a high bit of creative design with both of his stoves. So these are the nano sticks. We'll get to those in a minute. Now you can see there's a little flap I'm holding up. If you let the flap drop, it now locked it into a box. Can I go a little lower? There we go. So yeah, now we're locked into a very small box. The legs twist around as adjustable for a pot stand, so all the way out or all the way in for the tiniest of items. Um, but what I think he's done that is outstanding is you take these little nano sticks that go in 
the one side out the other. Same thing with this side. If I can get a hold of it, goes in, comes out. So now you can see that they make the uh, dividing rails there. And the beautiful part of this, I'm just going to get the Trangia in a burning mode. So we'll say the top is off. And that's it. Now, this, I hit my wipers. There you go. So now you're set as an alcohol burning pot stand. There is a lightweight wind guard that also comes with it, which you could arguably insert right now. Wait a minute. Hey, get in there. What am I doing wrong here? Where does it not go on that side? Hold on. <laughs> there we go. I have never actually had to use... Hang on. Let me take that out of the camera for a minute. I think it goes across the narrowest piece. I've never actually used the wind guard, even on my other one, because I typically use a piece of carbon felt. Okay, that's interesting. I know it fits on there. All right, so there's the wind guard on it. The wind guard actually becomes part of the pot stand in that, in that type of a setup. But I've never actually used it because typically I have some type of a windbreak, whether it's a big rock or something else. If I can get this down there a little bit more. No, nope, wrong way, too far. <laughs> there you go. So yeah, then you would just adjust it, light your alcohol, and set your pot on the top. And that's the first part. I can't. I need to fire this one because it's... I've actually not used this one because I have the steel one and I typically use it much, much more. But yeah, the, another, the advantage to the firebox like I was talking about yesterday, there are two holes here. You can see them at these angles. Um, actually, let me take these nanos. The sticks out. I don't need them for this demonstration. So yeah, what, there's multiple ways to burn in this thing. Number one is stick in at this direction, stick in at this direction. So they meet in the middle and you burn your fire that way and you just push the sticks in as they burn down. So it's a continual fuel source. You can make a Swedish torch of sorts by triangle chopping your smaller sticks down in there. Um, you can continually just fuel small sticks. Wood pellets, I've seen a lot of people burn in these things. They work extremely well. Um, the other option that I briefly mentioned, and now it's just figuring out the alignment, is this fuel tab burner. So like Esbit tabs or whatever other solid fuel you want to use, the nano sticks go in. Just like this. Wider end goes over there. And now we've dropped that down. The square is where your fuel tab goes. It gives you that roughly one inch of head height from the plate to the bottom of your stove. Amazing job at creating these stoves. There are a lot of folding slash collapsible wood burning stoves. And I just learned for me and my use, and I've tried, holy crap, the Uberleben, the, oh, I can't remember that company. It's another European design. I'm just trying to remember the name of it right now, and I can't, I'm drawing a blank. 
The only fiddly thing, for me at least, <laughs> is getting the sticks, the nano sticks, back in the stove so that you don't lose them. That's the only fiddly part for me. And there you go. Nice flat pack stove. This case was extra, but I bought it again because of the loop. I can hang it up at the top of my pack. My new pack does not have that loop in it. <laughs> so I need to fix that. But yeah, there's your stove. There, I, hopefully you can see some of the clouds. You know, I woke up this morning and I was in a good mood, having a good feeling about <laughs> my fellow man. And just a few minutes ago, I was doing a time lapse. I'll show you right here. And the guy and his wife walked by and told him I was doing a time lapse and asked if they would stay to the right of the trail. And the woman says, yeah. They walk by. The man turns around, jumps in the middle of the trail and starts jumping up and down like an idiot. Seriously? <laughs> so, that canceled that time lapse. Ooh, I gotta get a picture of this. Hang on a minute. Oh. Alright, so here's that picture. That'll just look kind of cool because it's a little bit heavily backlit and it kind of fogged up a little. And then that color popping of the leaf. That'll work. <laughs> but yeah, so sometimes, some days are good, some days are my faith in humanity gets a little bit shaken. <laughs> Hope we show you guys some of the color. It'd be nice if the sun would come back out, and it will in a minute, but not long enough for me to stand here and wait. <laughs> not today, I got things to do. Might have to come back out here tomorrow with my big camera and try and get a time lapse again. That, uh,. <laughs> That guy just ruined the perfect time lapse, but that's okay. People are going to be jerks no matter what. <laughs> Ain't nobody home. I don't even see anything sunning. Nobody home. <laughs> that entire island out there, not one single bird on it. But yeah, they're all getting ready to migrate, so no big deal. Cheep, cheep. <laughs> seen more and more sandhill cranes lately so that's good they're starting to come through um i've over the last couple of weeks i've been seeing them and then i was talking about that one episode that i actually could hear a bunch of them up high the clouds today <laughs> but yeah so i actually started working on the binaural mics last night too so now i gotta find a piece of Probably PVC to make the, the head block between the microphones and then get that set up. All right, so distance is done. <laughs> now I'm just going to start heading back to the van. It's just the temp right now is perfect. Just, you know, cool enough where you need a fleece. Almost needed gloves when I got out in the open air, but then again, my hands get really cold really quick, so. <laughs> um, yeah. Sorry, I'm listening to all the birds here. All these little guys that, mostly it's chickadees that you hear. Um, especially year round here, we keep them year round and it's pretty cool. You'll be walking along on the coldest of day and you'll pass one really dense you know, some type of an evergreen. And you'll hear them all in there chirping and cooing. And even on the coldest day, that's always a good, you know, it's a mood pick-me-up to hear the birds. So you're like, oh, they can make this, so can I. <laughs> Whose beautiful chariot is this? <laughs> hey, folks. All right, walk is done. I'm just downloading my distance here. Yeah, 2.35 miles. It's actually pretty wimpy, but it's supposed to be a wimpy day, at least according to Auto Goal. I think I'm going to turn that thing off <laughs> and just go back to my fixed goals every day. But anyway, that's it for today. Got um, a couple questions answered. Hey, it's stuck to it. 
Um, there you go. Anyway, so we'll talk about these more in a future video when I can get out and actually do a burn and have a little bit of fun with alcohol stoves. So I'm going to go back and edit this up and upload it later this afternoon for you guys. Again, if you're following the page on Facebook, you're going to get the notifications at around 7 p.m. every night. If you subscribe to the YouTube channel, you'll get them as soon as the videos are posted. So there's one more benefit to subscribing on YouTube. <laughs> anyway, it is a beautiful day, and hopefully we got plenty more to come this fall. So yeah, that's it for today, guys. Be good, be well, wear a mask if you have to, stay smart, be strong, stay mighty. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye, guys. Have a good one.